Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on what time you're watching this. Welcome to the Access Habitable Planet online course. My name is Neville Swade. I am the director of the Access program and very excited that we are doing this uh, online course again. It's been, I think it's our third or fourth uh, version of it. This year with a bit of a special twist, which you'll hear about at the end of my short presentation. I'm just going to orientate you around access um, and what we're doing in the program and so you know what you're a part of. Access is a program which is funded by the National Research Foundation and the Department of Science and Technology and hosted by the CSIR and uh, we're a research and education, science education program uh, with a very wide reach. This uh, circle of organizations are just some, in fact, of our partners. Um, it's a network of research institutions and um, we host a variety of different activities, including uh, postgraduate researchers as well as uh, the Habitable Planet courses. So it's a national program in South Africa, although we have had activities beyond our borders and we do have some international projects as well. So. The notion is that the Earth systems, as you probably are aware, uh, comprise various components. And really what we're trying to do is understand the region's role in the global uh, program, but really from a, a African perspective. And I always like to show this image of the world in this format. There's no reason why North or South needs to be on top or the bottom um, of any particular uh, image of the Earth. There's no valid reason why this is not the standard way of seeing the world. And if we look at it this way, we can see how important the Southern Hemisphere is, both the oceans, the atmosphere, and the land. And so what we're really trying to do here in this program is promote and enhancing a Southern African Earth System Science agenda. And that's really what we're doing with the ACCESS program. Uh, it's a region of the world which is relatively unstudied and in global climate models badly represented. Uh, so really, our focus is on trying to improve that uh, element of, of what it is that we're trying to do in the world of Earth System Science. Uh, the focus of the Access Program's research is on the annual cycle of climate. And if you look at that top graph, uh, what you can see is a typical average um, seasonal signal of maybe rainfall or temperature. And we are really used to the kinds of winters and summers that uh, we know. And so if you look at that blue graph, you'll see that it reaches some tolerance threshold, what we're used to. If you're poor and you have an economic disadvantage, then your ability to cope with that is, is compromised to some degree. Looking down below in the middle uh, panel, what you see there are what we call extreme events, which happen occasionally. And we've had a couple of those in recent times. We've had the El Nino of 2015-16, which caused a massive drought in the north. We've had the drought in the Western Cape, for example. These are extreme events. And when that happens, sometimes we get into situations where the environmental signal of climate exceeds what we are used to uh, on average of what's typical. And then we get uh, some damage to infrastructure and some stresses on society. If you poor the red dotted line, then the impact of that is much greater on your ability to cope. And then at the bottom, we can see also there are other forces of change namely global change, which we generically describe a whole range of different drivers, such as urbanization or canalization of rivers and damming of rivers, for example, which really changes our ability to cope with extreme events, which then become much more amplified. At least the impact becomes much more uh, amplified. And you can think of the various different examples of extreme events. So this seasonal cycle then becomes really important, especially um, if we think about what might happen in the future with uh, seasonal cycles, are we going to see an increased amplitude? In other words, will we see the signal uh, of, of our extremes of, of winter and summer changing or trending as the middle um, uh, panel shows you, or a combination of the two as the, bottle, the bottom one does? So do you see long-term changes in seasonal cycles, not just in the amplitude, but also in the timing? When does rainfall start and when does rainfall end? So what is the impact of climate change on the seasonal cycle is really what we're focused on in the access research uh, arena. South Africa is very unique, as you will learn in this course, uh, in the sense that we have a very wide range of climate 
zones within our country, um, and the graphs on the left show typical rainfall in different uh, climate zones, and the image on the right shows you the onset of, of, of growth of plants. So we see very different times of the year in which plants start to grow because they're responding to different climate zones. The long-term question is what's going to happen to those climate zones? Are they going to change? Are they going to merge? Are we going to see extremes or see them stretching further apart, for example? And these are some of the questions we're interested in in the research side of access. So let's take in a couple of examples. <clears throat> One of the things we're doing uh, with the work that we're trying to uh, complete is to develop um, early warning systems for extreme events. We might have extreme biological events such as as you can see that image of the army worms um, and other uh, biological impacts of change uh, impacting on society. We might have uh, impacts on the marine environment. On the right hand side is an image of the so-called crayfish warm walkouts which happen when the oxygen becomes depleted in the oceans or floods in Johannesburg as the case may be. And there are many other examples. One of the ones which we're very focused on is, is on diseases, on infectious diseases and what happens to those. And I'll give you a couple of examples of that in a minute. This image here uh, is, a, is an image of uh, the uh, impact of El Ninos and La Ninas, which are big uh, global events but have local impacts. So on the um, y-axis, going up the y-axis, is the strength of a particular El Nino event, how powerful it is. Sometimes you get big ones, sometimes you get small ones. And on the bottom axis, on the uh, x-axis, you can see um, it's uh, starting in the middle is, is normal, and then on the left is drier than normal, on the right of naught is, the, um, is, is wetter than normal. And so you can see a sort of a trend here. So if we get a very, very strong El Nino, we tend to get drier weather, drier climate uh, for that p particular season. And if it's a La Nina event, we tend to get a wetter one, but that's not always true. If you look at the two top ones, 2015, 16, and 19, 97, 98, the two strongest El Nino events that happened globally, in the 1997, 98 one, well, the, 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 the rainfall in the southern hemisphere, summer region, summer rainfall region was quite normal, really. But in 2015, 16, we had the driest of all El Ninos. And the big question we want to know is, what's driving El Nino's uh, repeat period. In other words, are they happening more frequency, more frequently? Are they happening more intensely? And when they are happening more intensely, what impact will that have? So this is just to show you that the signal is noisy, but still very, very important in its impact on our society. And I'll give you one more or two more examples of that. This is a graph showing soil moisture. And if you look at the bottom gray graph, what you can see there is what is currently the long-term average of soil moisture, especially in the summer rainfall areas of our country. So our soils are wettest just after March, at the end of the rainy season, and then they're driest again uh, towards the end of the winter in the summer rainfall area, uh, which is the dry season of the winter, and we have our driest soils in November. The color graphs, uh, and the one in the middle is an average, the top is the worst case scenario, and the green is the best case scenario, are from a climate model which predicts what's going to happen with soil moisture. And even in the best case, the green line, you'll see that our soils never get as moist as they are now, even at their most moist in that best case scenario. And um, in the worst case scenario, they are much, much drier. Uh, and the implication of that is this. So here, for example, we might have a growing season, a planting season, and a harvesting season. And all of these will change, including, and importantly, the fire season will change if the soil moistures do change according to this particular prediction. So understanding the seasonal cycle of some of the parameters of the ecosystem and their relationship to climate is really important in understanding the impacts of climate change as expressed through the seasonal cycle. Um, I'm going to pop onto the, this, this graph. Here's something which I think I hope will demonstrate the scale of the uh, interaction between different components of the Earth system. So this is a, a, a map. You can possibly make out the maps of land and ocean. And really what you're looking at here is ocean color. And without explaining too much uh, detail here, the, um, the graphs, the colors, demonstrate the difference between different periods of time 
subtracting the sea surface temperature from each other. So where it's blue, you're getting colder than normal, and when it's red, you're getting red and yellow and orange. You're getting uh, warmer than normal, and normal is the long-term average. And what we do is we measure the sea surface temperature, and then we correlate that with other factors. So in this case, what this shows is this is a typical pattern of perhaps uh, a number of years, where if the uh, ocean is cooler on the um, on the eastern side of Madagascar, but warm to the south of South Africa, we tend to get particular patterns of rainfall, which have either a positive or a negative impact on the incidence of malaria in Limpopo. So this is a relationship between the sea surface temperature quite far off our coast with incidence of malaria in people in the Limpopo region of South Africa. And this just illustrates the fact that what happens in the oceans affects what happens to people on the land. It shows the connection between the different Earth systems. And so we're really interested in understanding what's driving these changes and what is the future of these changes in, the, uh, in our future. One more example. This is looking at the annual cycle of diarrhea, which is work that I do. Uh, you can compare here the Western Cape, Gauteng, and Limpopo, and it shows what parts of the year, what months of the year are typically um, uh, year, uh, months in which we get high incidence of diarrhea and other seasons when we get low and uh, low incidence of diarrhea and it's interesting to compare these different climate zones there are some features here which i haven't got time to point out to you but to show that even though we have different rainfall we can see that the temperature here is really impacting on the incidence and so we can compare between years to see um, why are some years different to other years and what might that mean for future climate in the impact of diarrhea and also what's driving this why do we see these differences between years that's really important so those are some examples of some interactions between different components of the earth system we've kind of unpacked this into a concept and we have got uh, some research projects on the go in access at the moment trying to understand what's driving uh, the Earth system's uh, cyclical dynamic. We know that the ocean, sorry, the Earth responds to sunlight, but we know it's mediated by systems on Earth. So we have this regular cycle of the changing seasons, which I'm sure you all are aware of, is due to the Earth's tilt and its orbit around the sun. And, um, and so there are certain things that drive it on Earth, as well as the external uh, planetary uh, function, uh, then it's, it's, it's assimilated and the Earth systems respond to that at a particular time rate. Then that has an impact on states, so we would see a drought state or an El Nino state, as the case may be. That has impacts on society, and then we have to respond to it. And so those are the kinds of things we're looking at, and we're trying to understand what were um, seasons like in different time periods in the geological past, what might seasons look like in the future? And those are the kinds of questions we're, we're looking at. And so there's a pamphlet which you can download from the Access website which describes these six projects. And that's what the pamphlet looks like. There's, so we, as I said, we have six projects at, at, on the go at the moment, looking at everything from oceanography to atmospheric changes to the interactions between the different components of the Earth system, as well as some impacts on, on society and on, on the ecosystem. So that's the effort, the research effort that we're doing. And of course, critical to our research effort is training people. And so that's why we have Habitable Planet, which is um, one of the components of our training program. And what we're trying to do is show you how exciting and meaningful the work that we can do in this country and uh, is and what an opportunity it is for you who are participating in this course. We hope that you will enjoy this course. Uh, and learn a lot from it, and that you will be inspired by this course, uh, inspired to take it further, to consider uh, what your options are, and to find an exciting and meaningful career in Earth System Science uh, as a researcher and a contributor to the uh, future of this country insofar as trying to manage what we have um, to deal with in terms of climate change and climate variability in a particular situation, in a very special place, at a very special time in, in, in South Africa. The special part about this course, this year, is the fact that we have a, um, 
a reward for those that get through to the point. We are going to take those graduates who succeed uh, in this course. We're going to select a few based on outcomes and take you to the Global Change Conference, which is happening uh, in Polokwane in December this year. So hopefully you'll be motivated enough to not only complete the course, but to do very well in the course. And if you do that, then we hope that we, you will join us uh, for, four, for eight days, including four very exciting days to see what's really happening in the world of science and global change science in South Africa, including climate and earth system science and that uh, that is a really unique opportunity for 40 or 30 or 40 of you to participate in that so i'm going to stop there hope you have a great time at this course and uh, i'll see you at the other side thank you